and welcome to the business of being a virtual assistant. I'm your host, Tiffany Parson, and you're watching and listening to episode number 222. All right, guys, let's get into this. I woke up this morning and this is the topic that was on my heart, fresh in my mind, for whatever reason to talk to you about. Rejection. Let's talk about rejection in your business, okay? We can take it so personal when clients aren't ready. They may seem so interested in the discovery call. They have all these things they need us to do. But somehow or another, we send them the proposal, the rate for their project, and we don't hear from them anymore. I don't want you to feel rejected by that anymore, not after listening to this episode. Years ago, I used to do in-home art parties and I would do the whole spiel, the presentation. It was kind of like Mary Kay, but for art. As a matter of fact, if you're watching the video, The artwork here on the wall is actually the art that I used to sell. And our whole thing was like, oh, this is canvas art and it's not paper. doesn't have a glass because the canvas has to breathe. So anyway, I had so much fun selling um, this artwork. And that was the very first time I'd ever done in-home presentations in front of strangers. Uh, Sometimes I would know the hostess. Sometimes I wouldn't even know the hostess at all. Maybe I met her at someone else's party and she wanted to have the party. And then it went on that way. And I met a lot of nice people. Um, Had a lot of different good snacks back when I could eat all kinds of good stuff. Anyway, had lots of fun, enjoyed doing that. And I was thinking about the whole thing with rejection in your virtual assistant business and rejection um, and, and my experience in selling that. And I didn't feel rejected when people didn't want to buy art. It didn't bother me if they didn't want to buy it because I knew it was nice. I knew that it was quality. It was um, would add value to any room, office, whatever you, you know, were placing it in to add to your decor. I knew what I had. Now, when I used to sell jewelry, uh, maybe 10 years after I did art parties, I had uh, 10 years after I had stopped doing art parties, I did um, jewelry parties. And It wasn't the same. I like the jewelry, but I don't feel like I was able to translate the value of it to other people. I really like the jewelry, but I also knew there were a lot of negatives behind it as well. There was a lot of maintenance behind it. Like if you didn't keep this was costume jewelry. So if you didn't keep it in Um, covered in bags that it could turn. If you got it in water, it could turn, you know, all these things. And I am just a person that I I just do things with integrity. Uh, I can't help it. That's just how I operate. And knowing all these negatives, I think affect, I'm positive, not I think. I know it affects how I present the jewelry. So my customer would have to really, really love it on their own without me adding value to it because I knew the negatives. And it's like, if you're ready for this, then you're going to love it. But if you're not ready for this, don't get it. And not that I said that, but I'm sure in some kind of way, subconsciously, I gave that off. I'm using these two examples, the art party versus the jewelry party. Because this may be how you're approaching what you're offering in your virtual assistant business. So the difference is when I sold the art, like I knew, I knew the art was nice. 
You get to pick out your own frame. Not everybody's going to have it. Some uh, paintings, there were only a certain number of them. And once it was sold, that was it. Um, And again, I sold art in the early 2000s. And this is the artwork now, 20 some years later, right? And it's nice. Even after all these years, this is just an, an example. And so I knew what I was, you know, hey, you don't want it? No big deal. I know somebody else will. But with jewelry, it was like if somebody didn't want it, it's like, oh, I understand. I, you know, would be at vending events and have everything all out laid out on the table. And I knew my limits. Like if it was an outdoor vending event, like I had a time limit. This jewelry can't be out in the sun too long. Uh, or we got to make sure we have some shade. Jewelry is not going to last too long in this heat. And I just wasn't good. Um, it's the attitude about it, about how you feel and the value that you're bringing. So if you know that what you offer your clients is the best, like when you work with us, oh, it's going to be the bomb. We're going to help you do this. You're going to get this, that. Um, you know, whatever your thing is, you know, all the services that you're offering. I'm not going to use examples. You know what you're offering your client and you know the results that it's going to bring to your client. You know, if your client is not a numbers person and you come alongside them and you're able to do their bookkeeping and knock it out the park for them and help them, you know, sleep peacefully come tax time because they're all their books are in order then you don't have a problem with the client that's like, oh, okay, um, well, we won't be able to do that right now or that costs too much. You know, you're like, oh, okay, whatever. Not that you tell them, but you're okay. You're not taking it personally, right? But if you're kind of like, well, this is my first time. I just need one client. I got these bills I got to pay and, You know, I offer this service and people are going to, the, the vibe that you give off, people feel that even if you're not saying anything, they see your lack of confidence and what you have to offer. And so that makes them unsure about what you're offering. Goes back to the jewelry, my lack of confidence in it, even though I really liked it for myself. But I had some pieces to turn and to break and this and that. But and I did not want that for my customer. It was totally out of my control. I was not making the jewelry myself. I'm just selling it. It It's totally out of my control. Um, Or delivery time wasn't great. Maybe the, you know, it wouldn't break, but gosh, you know, you order this month and hopefully it'll be here in a few weeks or by next month, you know, that was out of my control, but I'm subconsciously people picked up on that. And so that made them hesitant. So are you giving off something that is subconsciously making your clients hesitant? Not your clients, making your prospects hesitant to come on board, hesitant to make you their trusted one for whatever services that you're offering. It's something to really think about. You know, we, nobody likes to feel rejected. We have to know as business people that it's not personal. We have to women, for the most part, we get our emotions and things and we have to take our emotions out of it. If you're a man and you've got your emotions and things, you have to take your emotions out of it. It's not personal. If they don't feel confident in the service, it's not personal. Maybe you are the bomb at what you do, but you don't know how to relate that value to your customer has to do with your confidence. Maybe you're just nervous when you talk to them. Maybe you you're, you know, you're clamming up behind the scenes. You they're going to ask me about the price and I'm not sure I need to calculate this. That all of that affects your confidence. 
So it might not even be rejection that we're battling. It's our confidence. Because if we're confident and they say no to the paintings that we offer, we know it's all good. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you looking at it. Let me know if you change your mind. If you have any questions or you know someone that would be interested, you have a great day. When we can be able to do that confidently, oh my goodness, sky's the limit. You won't care. You'll shout to the rooftops what it is that you're offering. So that's my challenge to you. I'm on this quest to push myself and not blink too many times, meaning not overthink it. Because if I blink too many times, I'm going to dive in and think about it. Just like this episode, I got the thought came to my mind. I need to talk about this and got ready, headed up here. And here we are. So anyway, I hope this helps you. As a matter of fact, I know it helped you. I'm confident that this is going to help you. So I want to hear about it. Let me know in the comments if you are watching on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, I want to hear from you. And for what, if what, for whatever reason, you're not on our email list, go ahead, get on that list. You want to text the numbers 33777. And the phrase is VA start. That stands for virtual assistant start altogether. VA start. Thanks so much. I appreciate your time for taking it out to watch and to listen. You have a wonderful and fantastic day. Mm-hmm.